What's up, football fans? Yes, as always, you're in the right place. You're watching FanDuel TV's More Ways to Win, and somehow we find ourselves right now in week 15. We've got football on Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. We're going to get to all of it. So much to get to as we break down the biggest games on the schedule, hand out our experts' best bets, and drop DFS best value plays as well. I'm Lisa Kearney hanging out with you from the FanDuel Sportsbook here at the Meadowlands in New Jersey. I'm holding it down on the East Coast, but across the country, we've got our crew, our sports betting expert, Dave Weaver, and former NFL wideout and Super Bowl champion, Champion James Jones in our Los Angeles studio. Sports Talk Radio host Andrew Filippone joining us from Pittsburgh. And as always, the face of Marquee Sports Network, our NFL expert Cole Wright with us in Chicago. Guys, it's week 15. Let's kick this thing off. So much to get to. More Ways to Win starts now. <laughs> And let's get right into it. A huge AFC East matchup in front of us featuring the top two teams in the division, the 8-5 and five Dolphins at the 10-3 and three Bills. There are major playoff implications for this matchup. Miami's lost two in a row. Tua playing two of his worst games of the season. They're going to try to bounce back against a Bills team that gives up just 17 points per game. It's second fewest in the league. This is going to be such a good game. It's one of the three Saturday games on the schedule for us this week. The Bills are giving seven points in this matchup. Dave Pony James, this game is for you. Let's get your picks. Dave, you are first. Love the Bills. I mean, this is a game that every year when Miami goes to Buffalo mm -hmm. and it's late in the year and it's cold, the Dolphins can't compete. You know, you, you take a fish out of water, what happens? They can't survive. That, it's a warm weather team that is going to Buffalo. It's going to be 30 degrees. So I did a little bit of research for you, Pony. I looked it up. The Dolphins, the last seven times that they've played in 40 degrees or less, 0-7 against the spread. The last four times they've gone to Buffalo, they've been outscored 155 to 75. So that averages out to losing 39 to 19. And Tua... He's not good on the road, ladies and gentlemen. All of his turnovers this year, the five picks and the lost fumble, have all happened on the road. So when they're in Miami, Miami can be Buffalo. But when they're in Buffalo, this is going to be blowout city, Pony. Mm. I don't think so, because I think I the think weather so. is actually going to make it a close game. It's, a, it's not a cold game. It's a you blizzard listen game. listen to anything? It's <laughs> not gonna, the weather's not going to make it a close game. Oh, yes. Y yes, it is, because neither team is going to be able to throw the ball. We're talking about wind gusts that are supposed to be around 40 miles per hour, snow that's going to kick in right around kickoff. That's going to be big squalls, big time snow. I've lived in Buffalo. It ain't pretty this Sorry time of year that. when this kind of thing kicks in. And plus, it's not like the Bills offense has been a juggernaut in their own right lately. Uh, Dave, you're giving me all kinds of stats on Tua. How about the fact that Josh Allen last four games, no 300 yard games during this win streak. So I do think Buffalo will probably win but we've seen games that 43 and a half take the under there all day. But I also think that the blizzard makes it a close game. Bills win, but not by a touchdown. You know what, Pony? You know, hey, I started off ready to ride with you, but we in studio, Let's so I'm going to ride with my dog, Dave. <laughs> this is going to be a beat down, right? And I'm going to tell you why. If you need heaters in La La Land, in Los Angeles, when it's 50 degrees and you need heaters on the sideline, that means mentally it is beating you up. I have played in the cold in some brutal games, negative 30s, negative 20s, whatever you want, some brutal games, right? And when it does get ugly, if you cannot run the ball, you are in trouble. And the Buffalo Bills run the ball better strictly because their quarterback is going to run the ball. Tua does not get out outside of the pocket to run the ball. That's why these last two games we've been seeing him going downhill and the Dolphins taking losses because everybody's playing them man-to-man -man and 55 covers. That's cover two man with safety help over the top. How do you beat that? You escape the pocket and you make some plays with your legs. But Tua has not done that. The Dolphins coaching staff has not figured that out. And they're not going to figure it out in the cold. And they're not going to commit to the run. They're going to try to throw this ball because that's not what they do. 
Buffalo Bills run away with this one in the cold at home with all the wind, with all that. This is going to be a beatdown, and it's going to be a beatdown because they remember they lost to the Dolphins last time they played them in Miami. That's right. Great points by all of you, and the weather is going to be the storyline going into this. And, of course, the Dolphins' ability to withstand the cold. Did you guys see Mike McDaniel's T-shirt at, at practice this week? Our producer, Vishal Mapara, reminded me. He's wearing a T-shirt that said, I wish it were colder yeah, okay. at practice this oh, week. Oh, yeah. <laughs> keep it Very up. sneaky. Love it. I love it. I love it. All right. All right. Let's keep this thing moving and shift now to the NFC East a division matchup here. We got the Giants on the road at the Commanders. Both teams 7-5-1. and one. You know this headed in opposite directions here over the last month. Commanders 3-0-1 uh, in their last four. Giants 0-3-1 during that same time frame. These two teams, guys, actually tied each other just right that back there in week 13. These two teams currently hold the last two playoff spots in the NFC, so a huge matchup here for us in week 15. Giants are getting four and a half. Dave, which side do you like? I don't think Washington's a good enough team to be giving four and a half points. They, they have not laid this many points all season long. And uh, going back to 2017, they've only been favored by four and a half points or more five times. And they're one and four against the spread in those games. So it's not a team that's built to cover big spreads. Why? Because they play close games. The last time they played the Giants, it was a tie. And it was a low-scoring back-and-forth game, which is exactly what this one is going to be, Cole. So it's going to be close. It's going to be tight. And my favorite nugget is Daniel Jones on the road as a dog. is 14-5 and five in his career. So... He, in low-pressure situations where nobody's expecting him to get the job done, he usually shows up. Now, there is a little bit more added pressure here, right, because of the playoff implications, but yep. I think he keeps it close. Weaver, I thought you said your favorite nugget was a chicken mick, but either way, no, uh, my favorite I sauce. Because, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Salient points you made all across the board, and then you take a look at these meetings, 182 in the books, and uh, Big Blue, well, they own the edge uh, by 34. So when you take a look at that week 13 tie, you know both of these teams trying to get out from behind that eight ball. Now, when you take a look at it through the Washington goggles, they've been hot lately. Wins in six of the last eight and just one loss. We know about that tie, and they've done it uh, with defense. Fourth ranked unit overall, and they haven't allowed a 100 yard rush since Derrick Henry back in week five. And uh, that big blue running game, well, I'll tell you, they are poised for a breakout because Saquon Barkley only has a one game with 100 or more rushing yards in his last six and, and that was versus the Houston Texans not a great football team just one W we'll talk about them later in the program but in the meantime Danny Dimes he's going to look a whole lot better than a, a, a nickel and five pennies and I'll tell you what Wink Martindale that defense I think they're going to get back on track this is going to be that get right game for New York they're going to protect things 24 to 21 and they get the win here I have a feeling we haven't convinced you because all year long you have not been buying in on the Giants. <laughs> uh, did we change your mind? Absolutely not. No. Are you guys watching the tape? Obviously not. The Giants are going like this. Daniel Jones is going like this. My dog Saquon Barkley's going like this because they cannot <laughs> spread the ball over the yard and they stack in the boxes saying, Saquon Barkley, you're not going to beat us. That's why he ain't hit 100 yards rushing in the last couple weeks. Daniel Jones is going to have to make throws to open up this offense. Oh, wait, we've been saying that since he came into the National Football League, and it ain't happened. It ain't happening. It's not going to happen, right? <laughs> they were on this winning streak strictly because Saquon Barkley was playing at an MVP level. Obviously, teams are figuring him out and knowing how to stop that and saying Daniel Jones is going to have to beat us and Daniel Jones ain't beat nobody just strictly on his right arm, and it's not going to happen. This is a division game. I do think it will be close. That's why they tied last time. It's not going to be no surprises. They know each other very well. But the Commanders are going to win this game because they are playing better and they are the better football team right now than the Giants. The Giants are showing us exactly who they are and exactly who we thought they were going to be, Lisa, when this season started. I'm not surprised that the Giants are looking like this right now, and they're going to take a big L this weekend. They were who we thought.
thought they were. There All right, you, you guys, let's move on. Let's get to the Jets. <laughs> Our host in, uh, right here at the Meadowlands as the Lions roll into town. New York 7-6, and six, Detroit 6-7, six and seven, both, of course, trying to finish strong and make these playoffs. Something not a lot of people coming into the season would be saying that they would be in this position right now. The Lions have been hot, winning five out of their last six. For the Jets, Mike White came in, provided that offensive spark, but they have still lost three of their last four. Four. Got to get you guys back in here. I'm going to have you bet this game. The Jets are one point home dogs. Pony, very tight line. Which side do you like here? Like the Jets. You mentioned that five out of six for Detroit. Dan Campbell has got that offense playing well right now. Jared Goff having a bounce back year. However, during that stretch, they faced only one defense that was ranked in the top 20. That was Buffalo's. And that was the one game that they lost. So now, it's on the road against New York. Sauce Garner at corner. He's going to take away probably St. Brown, I would guess, and force Jared Goff to go elsewhere with the ball. Remember, they traded Hawkinson to Minnesota earlier, so there's one weapon that's gone. And then you've got Quinn and Williams, the big defensive tackle up the middle. He is sixth in the league in sacks. Hey, everybody loves offense, but Cole, defense wins championships and wins games. And right now, I'm convinced the Jets have the vastly superior defense in this matchup, and I expect that to carry them to victory. Yeah, Bobby Sal, clearly a defensive-minded head coach, and he has his Jets rolling despite the fact that they're third in the division. They're above 500, and there's just four games left to play for Gang Green. And what really uh, takes center stage with this squad is their ability to go out there and beat the teams that they're supposed to beat. Now, seven wins on the year and five of those seven Ws. Well, they come versus lesser than opponents, teams below 500. Now, despite that quarterback play from Mike White, back-to-back -back losses for the first time all season long for this Jets team. And with three of their four that are still left on the schedule versus sub-500 competition, well, something tells me this is the time when Robert Sala is going to that box in the closet, pulling out those receipts and letting everybody know that we are a team right now with playoff aspirations, and we're going to punch that ticket. They're going to protect the house and their playoff shot. 21-17, Jets, they're going to fly in this one. No, they, they, uh, yeah, you see it. That's a, this is a clean sweep right here. Clean sweep. You better believe it, right? Yeah. The Jets playing defense at a very, very high level, right? The Detroit Lions have been like this. That's an inconsistent football team. When they're like this, they are a really good football team playing at a high level, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But what has been really, really consistent all season long on this Jets team is defense. And that is why they have the record they have. That is why they're looking at the playoffs in the eye because of the way Sauce Gardner and this defense is playing. They go out there at home and they make it extremely hard on Jared Goff and this offense. I'm saying at least three takeaways for this defense to get the ball back to their offense. And that is going to be the changing point in this game to get them to W. But this defense is not playing around. They're big time. I mean, you see how they handle Josh Allen. You see how they handle Kirk Cousins. This team on the defensive side of the ball can win the game strictly on that side of the ball, and I think they get it done against the Lions this weekend. You guys know I love me some Dan Campbell. I love all that energy out there up north. But I got to tell you what, Jets getting points at home. We're going four for four on this show. There we show. go. There we Gang go. Gang Green, we see you. Making right, show that's history. A look at the First biggest time James has agreed with me. Wow. <laughs> You know, I, I, I think that is true. Yes, it, it was going to happen. At <laughs> it some only point, took till week 15, guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Great stuff by you guys. Lots more to come ahead on the show. But first, I got to get you this quick reminder that you can get up to one thousand dollars back if you don't win your first bet. Yes, you right now. New users, download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, sign up for your new account using the promo code right there on your screen. More ways one thousand after you sign up. Just place your first bet with us. It's that easy. If you don't win, you're going to automatically get your stake back in free bets. So download the app, sign up using that promo code MOREWAYS1000, and play with us today. And I just said it, but it is true. We are just getting started as we dig in here on week 15. Coming up, Dave is revealing his big payday parlay, America's new favorite segment. See which teams he's backing to turn a small bet into a big winner. Plus, we're giving out the best value DFS plays for the week. We're coming right back. Stay with us. In every matchup. 
You guys know this. There's an underdog and there's a favorite. But how do you know which one to bet? Well, you're watching a sports betting show, so our answer, of course, is both. But you have to be smart. You need to tap into really knowledgeable experts who will tell you where the best value is on the board. So that's what we do. We bring it to you. Let's fire up our traveling circus here as we roll out this week's Dog and Pony show. Guys, happy week 15 to you as we do every week. Pony is playing the part of Pony. Our special guest, Chad Millman, will be bringing the dogs. All right. Great, great having Chad with us every single week. Chief Content Officer of the Action Network. All right, guys, let's get right into this. Pony, you're up first. Give us your first favorite favorite of week 15. Well, Lisa, in the holiday spirit, I'm trying to give you a nice present here, and it's the Chiefs minus 14 against the Texans. Hey, they've had a hard time covering big spreads all year, but I do think this is an exception because of what's transpired in the last few days. For Houston, now running back Damian Pierce, not going to play in this game. Their rookie revelation, their wide receivers are already dinged up. Uh, Nico Collins, Brandon Cook. So they're the walking wounded as the worst team in the NFL. And remember this about Kansas City in a close game against Denver. Mahomes threw three interceptions, and they still scored 34 points. I expect them to score more than 30 in this game, and if they do, I don't think Houston will be able to backdoor cover it. I'm going to take the Texans with the biggest spread of the week, lane 14. Okay, I love it. Pony, coming out hot out of the gates. Chad, give me an underdog you like. All right, well, I'm talking about the Jacksonville Jaguars, four, four-and-a-half-point underdogs at home against the Dallas Cowboys. I can't really understand why this line is as high as it is. The Cowboys are decimated by injuries in the defensive backfield. They also are struggling with some injuries on the offensive line. But most importantly, Trevor Lawrence is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL the past six weeks, 10, 10 touchdowns, no interceptions. What One thing he seems to have figured out that he struggled with early in the season in the red zone was throwing balls with touch. He was throwing a flat ball. Now he's throwing with a little bit more touch, making it easier on his receivers. That's why his touchdowns have increased over the past six weeks. Another thing you got to remember, the Cowboys have an amazing pass rush. The Jags, very good at protecting Trevor Lawrence, fifth in the NFL against the pass rush as an offensive line. So I'm liking the Jags, not just as a dog, but as a straight uh, money line winner here. Yeah, everyone talks about Trevor Lawrence being so good lately. Your graphic right there said a 10 touchdowns, zero interceptions since week nine. He's playing incredible football right now. Uh, great stuff by Chad Pony. Give me your second favorite favorite here for week 15. Yeah, this is maybe less obvious than saying the Chiefs are going to beat the Texans. I like New Orleans against Atlanta. Let me take you through it. The Falcons are going to go with Desmond Ritter. So he's going to make his first start. This is a mobile quarterback, a dual threat guy. Obviously did great work at Cincinnati, getting them to the college football playoff last year. But this is a tough matchup for a guy making his first start. You know what the Superdome can be on opposing fans. And not only that, but look at the Saints defense the last couple of times out. They held San Francisco when Garoppolo was healthy, McCaffrey was playing, and the 49ers had all their weapons to 13 points. They shut down Tampa Bay for 58 minutes the last time they played. Now they got burnt in the two-minute drill. I don't expect a rookie quarterback to have the same success in those type of moments. So I like New Orleans to, I guess, get themselves back in the NFC South race and cover four and a half in this game. All right, Chad, coming right back to you. Give me another underdog that you like. All right, so Lisa, the last couple of weeks, I have come on this show and I have told the viewers, trust me, take the really ugly dog with a lot of points at home against a really good team. I said take the Rams a couple of weeks ago. I said take the Broncos last week, even when it was 27 nothing, and all the Twitter hate was coming in. I never lost faith in the Broncos this week. Bears plus nine at home against the Eagles. Huge pros Joe's game. And what I mean by that is the professional betters love the Bears this week. The public, obviously, given what the Eagles have been doing, are betting on Jalen Hurts, now the favorite to win the MVP. I will leave you with one stat, which I talked about last week, which, by the way, is only more relevant this week. When you've got teams that are winning at a percentage of 65% or higher against teams that are losing at 25% or lower, which is the Eagles and the Bears, 
The underdogs covered a 57% clip since 2016. That number bumps up a little bit since 2020. So let's do it again. Let's roll it back. <laughs> let's take the ugly dog, the Bears plus nine. Yeah, majority of the money you say right there coming in on those Bears. You can get them plus nine right now. All right, uh, let's do a quick recap here of your picks for week 15. Pony, you first, your two favorites. You like the Chiefs giving points to Houston. Saints giving points to Atlanta. Quick change, we get to Chad's picks. Here are the dogs that Chad says, get down money on them right now. You're taking the Jags and the Bears both getting those points. Awesome stuff by you guys. You can bet those dogs and favorites right now, of course, on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And as I say every week, you can get more of Chad's insights by listening to the Favorites podcast wherever you get your podcasts. And also make sure to download the Action Network app for expert picks, live scores, and stats. Thanks, you guys. All right, let's roll on here on More Ways to Win and get to our next segment here. Now it is time to turn a little bit into a big win, America's favorite new segment. Yes, Dave's Big Payday Parlay. Dave, you're going to try to turn $20 into thousands. Yes. Show us the magic. Who's in your big parlay this week? Yeah, we're looking for a comma here. Okay, so let's, let's, let's see how, how much we can turn this $20 into. This week, we're going to play an eight-team money line parlay. Some favorites, no, some underdogs. Money. A little bit of a mix, but eight teams that I think yeah. are going to win. And I think the Desmond Ritter era is going to start with the win. So I'm actually taking Atlanta Falcons, to beat okay. the Saints. So we're already starting out with one underdog. Now with some money. Free square on the bingo card. Yep. It seems to be one every week. It's the Chiefs. You know, minus oh, 900. Yeah. Easy work. But it juices it up yeah. just a little bit. And going forward, I think Dallas is just too much offense for the Jaguars to keep up. So I'm going to take the Cowboys as well. Cowboys $20, we're almost up to 70 bucks. And then we're going to use the Arizona Cardinals. Anytime I can get plus money against the Broncos, take it. I'm going to take it. $189 now for the 20 bucks. Let's move on. Raiders. Raiders. With the win here, oh, yeah. their slim playoff hope mm -hmm. stay alive. Stay so alive. they need to beat the Patriots. Second game on the West Coast. Saying there's a chance. Bill Belichick kept them uh, on the West Coast, but it's still not easy to have two no road doubt. games like that in a row. So give me the Raiders. Chargers, you know, when you have Keenan Allen and Mike Williams back healthy, yeah. they're going to be tough going forward. I think they make a late run for the playoffs and they're easy able to get the win not against the Texans they are playing the Tennessee Titans, yeah, the Titans. either way yeah. Chargers is the pick and then a very key divisional matchup between the Giants and Washington Ooh, I think Danny Dimes pulls okay. off the upset and now when we throw in Aaron Rodgers against Baker Mayfield that's all I got to say about that's that what I'm saying. That's now we go over like two thousand dollars <laughs> so why your money jumped to two thousand here we go yeah, 20 bucks go. Lisa two thousand two hundred and sixty four those are the eight teams that need to win. Take that all day. Yes. Yes. I miss being in studio with you guys. That energy is what I need you. injected in my veins. We got yes. You. Yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will see you right back there next week, by the way. Great stuff by Dave. Look at those odds skyrocket. I love it. Tail Dave or create your own big payday parlay to win big on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. All right, rolling on here. You can also get in on the fun with Daily Fantasy. You know this one-stop shop right on your phone. FanDuel has a bunch of DFS contests that are live right now where you can win thousands of dollars on FanDuel.com and on the app. Now, how do you give yourself an edge? Well, you got to find the best value at each position. So we bring in a ringer each and every week. Jim Sonis is the senior writer and analyst for Number Fire. He's done the research for you. Jim, who are your best value plays here for week 15? Thanks, Lisa. I always love slates where we can find our value plays in games with high totals, and that is exactly what we get here for this week over on FanDuel. That begins at tight end with Cole Komet coming in at $5,300. Komet had seven targets in the Bears' first game without Darnell Mooney, now coming off a bye, and the Bears going to have to throw to keep pace with the Eagles in this game, so Cole Komet should see some volume and has had a lot of yardage upside in the games, but that's been the case. A wide receiver, I love Michael Gallup coming in at $5,700. He hasn't shown upside yet so far this year, but he's had to build blocks 
for it because Gallup has a 27% D target share in the games they've played since Noah Brown came back from his injury. Gallup's target share overall in those games is 19%, so he gets me exposure to a game I want to stack, so Michael Gallup, a fun play on FanDuel for this week. Sticking in that same game at running back, let's go to Travis Etienne coming in at $7,000. Etienne is in a major, major slump right now, potentially due to the foot injury he suffered a couple of weeks ago, but Etienne still averaging 96.3 yards per game as the Jaguars feature back in the game since they phased James Robinson out of this offense. Etienne is holding up a 43% red zone share in that time as well. So yeah, it's been rough, but his salary is down to $7,000. Facing off with the Cowboys, you can run them a bit. So Etienne and Gal give me exposure to a really fun game, Lisa. And I think that we can bank on their production to tick up this week. Thank you, Jim. Set your lineups right now, FanDuel.com. Of course, follow Jim on Twitter as well, at Jim Saunas, and check out his Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for hanging with us here in Week 15. Up next, we're breaking down the rest of the Saturday games on the schedule. Plus, we've cornered our guys, asked them to give us their best bets of the week. They're coming in hot next. You're watching More Ways to Win. We're coming right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back to more ways to win here on FanDuel TV. Always love having you with us. And it is time now for our betting experts to take on our X player and a betting debate based on eye test and experience. Hey, each of our betting experts will go toe to toe with James. Again, nine year NFL veteran, Super Bowl champion. He knows his stuff in and out. They are going to state their case and we'll settle up next week. Deal? All right, let's do this. Let's get this game started with the early game on Saturday. The 4 8 1 Colts at the 8 3 Vikings. Indy's lost 6 of 7, has the second lowest scoring offense in the league. They'll be up against a Vikings team that ranks dead last in total defense. All right, Cole, Minnesota is a 4.5 point favorite. Do your thing. Well, I'll tell you what, I place all the blame for Indy on their wide receiver coach, but we'll get to that in just a little bit because nine games decided by eight points or fewer this season in Minnesota. What have they done, James? They've won each and every single one of them. Now, despite playing at a 500 clip over the last four, they continue to show that their ability to win at home is uh, second to none. They're tied with Philly and San Francisco for the best home record in all the league at six and one. However, Kevin O'Connell's uh, team, they're looking for their first win versus Indy. Since 1997, mm. Cat Suits had a whole lot more buttons on it back then. And the Colts, well, they've won the last six in the series. And this time around, the Vikings, well, uh, they're looking to scorch the Colts' top 10 defense with that top 10 passing offense. So we'll see how things go. I think it's going to shake out uh, with a purple victory. Vikings, they win this one 28 to 17, James. Yeah, Cole, I think this is all about how bad the Colts are, right? When you turn the tape on on the Indianapolis Colts, they're just a bad football team. I know <laughs> Jeff Saturday tried to come in there with some new mojo, give a big old speech and all that, and it worked against the Raiders. But lately, right, they just a bad football team. So this is really a get-right game for the Minnesota Vikings after coming off laying an egg against the Detroit Lions. They are going to bounce back in a big way. They're going to come out with a sense of urgency knowing, you know, that they are trying to make a playoff run. This is going to be another beatdown. The coach just don't have the firepower with Matt Ryan and all that to keep up with Kirk Cousins in this offense. So you're blaming the Colts wide receiver coach this is too. The game the I am blaming the Colts wide receiver coach, the coach head coach, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> Guys, this is a game flat out the Vikings cannot lose. End of story. All right, let's get to these 9-4 Ravens at the 5-8 and eight Browns kickoff Saturday, 4.30 Eastern time. The quarterback situation, really the storyline for Boston, right? A lot up in the air. Lamar Jackson missed last week with that knee injury. His backup comes in. Tyler Huntley left that game with a concussion. Undrafted rookie Anthony Brown would get the start. Mm. We go back to Jackson, and if he can't go. So we could be looking at a rookie getting the start here, Pony, and this uncertainty has the Browns listed as a two and a half point favorite. What do you think about that line? Well, because that's the only justification for it. Baltimore, the record speaks for itself. They're the better team. Uh, they have beaten Cleveland in the Lamar Jackson era routinely. Jackson would always get the better of Baker Mayfield, but I do think that this is significant. Deshaun Watson has looked awful so far, but eventually you would figure he would start to look more like the franchise quarterback that he was two years ago once he gets a few more games and snaps 
under his belt. I watched Anthony Brown. He really can't throw the ball. Mm. He's strictly a runner. They'd have to run almost a wildcat offense with him at quarterback. So I do think right now there is value in taking Cleveland minus two and a half, James, because if it is Brown, that line might go up to closer to seven by kickoff. I'm with you on this one, Pony, because, I mean, this one's scary, right? I mean, because you want to say the Baltimore Ravens easily in this ball game with what they have, but at the quarterback position, if you can't score, you cannot win. I do think this Baltimore Ravens defense will hold up. I think they will play three really good quarters, and I think the game is going to be really close. But I think Cleveland with Deshaun Watson is going to find a way to make some plays, and they possibly can win this game, but they definitely keep it close. This Baltimore team without their quarterback, I mean, they even got their backup quarterback, is going to struggle to put up points. I want to pick Cleveland, but they just been pl playing so bad, it's hard to go against them. But I think this is going to be a really, really, really close game. I think the Baltimore Ravens squeak one out strictly because they defense find ways to win the game for them, get a score. And they're there, the plus money sitting there. All right, Dave, you're up for the 10-3 and three Cowboys at the 5-8 and eight Jags. This game's kind of fun. Dallas needed a 98-yard touchdown drive in the last seconds to beat the Texans last week. We all saw that play out. And then on the other side, this is why this matchup is fun to me. Trevor Lawrence, career high, 368 passing yards, along with four touchdowns in their win against the Titans. He is playing very good football right now. Dave, there are the Jags, though, who have lost 20 straight to <laughs> NFC opponents. They're getting four and a half Ooh. at home. How do you see this one playing out? Well, you know, you go back and you see how bad Dallas played last week. They never had a chance to cover. They were favored by 17 points, and they were sleepwalking that whole game. But it reminds me of last year when they were a big favorite against Denver, didn't score a point into the fourth quarter, and they lost that game. But they came back the next week, and they won by 40. I, I think it's a wake-up call for them to not be able to sleepwalk against these sub-500 teams. And I think they're going to bring it, and they're going to bring it big and blow out the Jaguars. And, you know, last week they beat the Titans. Uh, Trevor Lawrence had a good game. The Titans' pass defense, 31st in the league. Dallas is second. You're not going to have that game against this Dallas secondary. I think it's going to be a, a pretty easy cover here for the Cowboys myself, James. You know, the Cowboys do got a really good defense. That's why they have the record they have, because both their quarterbacks are – weren't playing lights out. Cooper Rush wasn't playing lights out. Dak Prescott the last couple weeks, he ain't been playing lights out, but they're finding ways to win strictly because of the way the defense is playing. But let me tell you something. This is a different Trevor Lawrence, and I think we are going to have to start putting a little respect on his name and start believing what we are seeing because these last three, four weeks, he has been playing lights out. He has been getting much better under his head coach. And when he steps on the football field, you see him making the right reads. You see him making first-round throws, incredible throws. I think it's time for us to start really believing what we are seeing from Trevor Lawrence, and I like the Jacksonville Jaguars in Duval to get this thing done against the Cowboys. And Cowboys Nation ain't going to know how to react after Jacksonville beat them boys up. What do we decide? Ten U's in that Duval? Yes. Uh, also, just to throw in there, Tre Trevor Lawrence, so much being made about his play recently. Ten touchdowns to zero interceptions since week nine. He is, in fact, playing incredible football right now, living up to that sunshine nickname. All right, guys, uh, now, as promised, let's get to it. We're coming in hot with our best bets of week 15. As usual, our experts are giving them out in the form of a spread, money line, and total bet. And get this, Dave uh-huh. I will, I will give you your love. This is part of our weekly competition where each of the guys gets 100 virtual dollars. Last week, Dave took that 100 bucks, yes. and he went three for three. You hit all of your picks. Panthers getting the points at the Seahawks. Ravens on the money line, and you went over on the Eagles-Giants game, basically doubling your $100 bet there. So, you know, pressure's on because I want three more winners from you for this week. What you got? Yeah, Pony and I both love the Panthers, so give him a little bit of kudos for that. But as far as this week, I'm going with the New York Giants as my best bet. So I'm going to put $55 to make 50 on them with the four and a half points. Daniel Jones, 14 and five against the spread as a road dog in his career. He'll keep that within a field goal. My money line bet, it's the Desmond Ritter era now in Atlanta. I think he can get a win in his first NFL start and knock off the Saints as a pretty decent underdog. Then my total, just like last week, where I had the Eagles to go over, and I thought the Eagles might be able to get that number on their own. 
They did. They scored 48 points. The Cowboys could score 48 points against the Jaguars and hit this 47 and a half. They're probably not going to need to because Jacksonville could also contribute a little bit offensively. But I love the over in that game. So my, my last $25 pony is on the over. Dave, ever since you shaved the mustache, you've been red hot That's here true. with picks. So that was kind of dragging you down. Okay, here we here we go. I'm going to take the I'm going to take the Bucks against the Bengals. Cincinnati's red hot, but it looks like Tyler Boyd and T Higgins are questionable for this game. Hendrickson pass rushing, which is a big deal because the Bucks offensive line is in tatters and there's been Brady magic at home this year pulling out games late. Plus you're getting three and a half. Let's start there. Money line pick teacher versus student. Raiders going to get the better of the Patriots right now. I don't know what's going on with Bill Belichick's offense. Patricia Collin plays. Mac Jones screaming his head off. No touchdowns on Monday night. They were lucky to beat the Cardinals because of Kyler's injury and turnovers. I think the Raiders win that game outright. And then lastly, the under in Chargers Titans. Chargers run defense is abysmal. And we know Derrick Henry is due for a good game. That's going to bleed clock, run clock and keep that game under. All right, guys, you can make, make those bets right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And as you know, accountability is kind of a big deal on this show. And that means highlighting when we are hot. We just gave Dave some love. Cole nailed his upset pick last week, telling everyone the Ravens would head to Pittsburgh and get that win. Coming up, Cole and James are back at it. They're going to tell you which money line, money makers they are picking here in week 15. Stay with us. More Ways to Win is coming right back. All right, welcome back to More Ways to Win. Let's focus on some money line, money makers for you right now. And upset alert time is here. We're giving them out in the, bet, uh, the form of a bet emoji treatment here because, oh, yeah. yes, we like to have a little fun. Before we get to James and Cole's picks, how about a shout out for Cole, huh? For his pick of the Ravens winning in Pittsburgh last week. Well Cole, done, Cole. Pressure is on. Let's hear it, right? I know. A little love for that. Uh, what's your upset special by two. pick? They for this won week? by two. Come on now. There, and you deserve that. What you got for the okay. for us this week? All right. Well, you know what? I, I really don't care that Tennessee is two and three over their last five because Mike Vrabel and company, they're first place and they've done so by winning games on enemy turf. Four and three on the road, but more importantly, they're four and two over their last six. And Derrick Henry looking for back to back 100 plus rushing games for the first time since week seven and eight. The Chargers, their bottom third defense, they're going to be playing catch up all day with the Kang, the Titans. And they're not going to sink in this one. They win. 2720 away from the house. Book it. Stop that, James. No. Stop. Yeah. The, the, oh. <laughs> the, only ah. reason, the only reason why I got this I'm up with you, right, Cole. The only reason why I got this up right now is because <laughs> did they really just give you credit for picking the Ravens to beat the Steelers? <laughs> over the Steelers so, by two points. So I give you that Nail for getting head. credit for picking that. I give you that. But I give you this yeah. for this week's because this ah. is going to be a big time win for the yeah. Tennessee Titans. I like it, Cole. What? Okay, thank you, James. Oh, you All right, it. James. What, what about you, James? What you got? I'm going, Lisa, we're going to use about 15 to 20 of them right now. I'm going to do <laughs> the Jacksonville Jaguars upset the sleepy Dallas Cowboys. They were sleepy last week. They about to come in here to do <laughs> And I think Duval is going to put it on him. Trevor Lawrence has been playing at a high level. We have to start giving him respect, right? He's looking like the quarterback we thought he was going to be. I mean, we are seeing a bunch of first-round throws. Like, some of these throws can't a lot of quarterbacks make in the National Football League, and he's making them look real easy, and he's doing it on a consistent basis. I like Jacksonville beating the Dallas Cowboys and sending them back to Dallas with an L. Mad leaving. Do <laughs> Oh, okay. What's that? that? Oh, right here. Stop. We knew I was going to ask. Yes, Prescott. guys? Yes. That crest got a line. I see you. I see you, Pony. Pony, you the only one I see. That's it. <laughs> Five and eight. That's all he needs to see. <laughs> <laughs> awesome stuff. All right. If you agree with Cole, if you agree with James, you want to just do you, that's okay, too. All good. Hop on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now and get that plus money before kickoff. You know these lines change, and they change 
fast. All right, in addition to betting on the games, of course, you can also win part of a $10,000 prize pool just by answering a few questions about this week's games. And it is free to enter, so come play with us. Enter the GMC Sierra Mountain Climber Pick'em Contest by logging on to FanDuel.com slash free slash contest slash GMC Mountain Climber and answer questions about the matchups before the early games kick off on Saturday. The more you get right, the higher you move up that mountain. Fans who get every answer right will reach the summit and win a share of the $10,000 prize paid in sight credit. Eyes on the prize team. Make sure to enter the free GMC Sierra Mountain Climber Pick'em Contest going on right now. And if you don't win this week, it's all good. You can enter every week of the NFL season. As always, have fun. Enjoy these games and good luck in the contest. All right, you know this by now, but FanDuel offers a bunch of DFS contests as well where you can win thousands of dollars by starting the right players. So right now, we're bringing you ringers well worth their high price tag. We do this every single week, and we do it by bringing in our ringer, Jim Sonis, back with the goods here. Jim, who's on your can't-miss list here in Week 15? Thanks, Lisa. So I want to focus the stud section around one game for this week that features good matchups on both sides. That's the Chargers and Titans, starting off with the Chargers passing offense and Mike Williams at $7,200, facing off this Titans secondary that has struggled especially recently, and Williams came back with 116 yards this past week on just six targets. So the target share was not good, but Williams can get chunk yards in a hurry. $7,200, way too low for a guy with his upside, so I want to start there. You can game stack and then on the opposing side with Derrick Henry coming in at $8,900. We know the Chargers struggle to stop the rush. We know Henry has been an unstoppable force at times this year, so it should be good efficiency on the ground for Henry, but he also may get more work in the passing game with Dontrell Hilliard being banged up right now. So both Derrick Henry and Mike Williams, fun ways to get exposure to what could be a shootout game in Los Angeles. We'll finish things off at quarterback with Jalen Hurts coming in at $9,000, a guy who can burn you both with his legs and with his arm, facing off with the Bears. A a super banged up defense going into their bye week. They may be healthier now, but I'm not sure how much it matters with the Eagles offense potentially getting Dallas Goddard back as well. Jalen Hurts has proven all this year he is well worth his high salary. And Lisa, I don't expect that to end this week. So Jalen Hurts once again at the top of our list at quarterback on FanDuel. Yes, Jim, that is strong. Set your lineups now, FanDuel.com, and follow Jim on Twitter at Jim Saunas. And another reminder to check out his daily Covering the Spread podcast wherever you get your podcasts. All right, team, coming up, how to bet the AFC and NFC winners. There's some really good value on the board, and our experts are going to reveal which teams to back. That is next. All right, team, it's week 15. We've talked some spreads, money lines, and totals, but you know this. There are also a fun, a bunch of fun futures bets um, listed on the FanDuel Sportsbook app right now. So we're going to take a look at the conference winners, and we're going to start in the NFC. We're going to get right to it. There, it, Those are the odds right there. Eagles are the current favorite, which I know it makes sense, but there's a lot of really good value on this board. Guys, let's get around the horn with your picks, and Dave, you're first. Well, the Cowboys have something and nobody else has, and that's a one-two punch in the backfield. You know, you have Zeke and Pollard performing at very high levels. That's tough on defenses. Give me the plus 360 on the Cowboys. Mm, give me the San Francisco 49ers. I mean, I don't think it's a team in the National Football League that wants to play the San Francisco 49ers. They can win any type way. If you got to score seven to win, they can win because they got a good defense. If you got to score 30 to win, they can win because they can put up points with the best and they can run it and they can throw it. I like these Niners. Eagles are the best team, but there's no value there. So I would go with Dave and take Dallas because they should be ahead of a team that's quarterbacked by Brock Purdy right now. Couldn't beat him last year. Yeah. Well, one of these kids is doing his own thing. Come on, can you tell which one? And it's James in this quad box because I'm making it three out of four. I'm going with the Dallas Cowboys. I picked them at the beginning of the season to come in with the under when it came to comes to ten and a half wins. But right now, I'm going to have to admit my fault and say this is a squad. I'm going with the Cowboys. I like your usage of quad box. That's technical TV lingo. Thank you, Cole. Uh, let's do the same thing here with the AFC, guys. The Bills, the favorite team. Uh, other teams are playing very good football right now. Dave, who do you like here in the AFC? 
I'm taking a big shot here. 20 to 1 on the Los Angeles Chargers. Look, they have not had their two receivers healthy all year, but they finally have Keenan <laughs> Allen and Mike Williams. Who's laughing? Is that Pony or Cole? That's the me. The Chargers That's me. are back, baby. <laughs> They're going to make a big push out. here. Cut it out. Well, I know this is not going to be 3 to 1. Um, I am going. <laughs> I am going to Lamar Action Jackson led Baltimore wow. Ravens. They defense is on a whole nother level right now. Ever since they added Roquan Smith, they are playing at a very high level. When he comes back off this injury, it's not going to be too many teams on this board in this AFC that want to uh, see the Baltimore Ravens. I've been pe telling everyone on the show for weeks to bet the Bengals. Those odds keep coming down and down and down and down. And I still actually think there's value on them at six to one. Well, right now I'm looking somewhat chalky. Right. I'm not going to Buffalo, Kansas City, but Pony, Cincinnati makes a whole lot of sense. Thank you. I, I was waiting for Thank you, Cole. My ride or die. Let's go. All right, you guys. Uh, it's that time of year again. Happy holidays. Santa Barkley is coming to town, and he is delivering $20 million in gifts this holiday season to all FanDuel customers. I love this. It doesn't matter if you've been naughty. It doesn't matter if you've been nice. Santa Chuck has something for everyone. Just to check your FanDuel app starting Monday through Christmas Day for no sweat, same game parlays, casino bonuses, and all sorts of stuff that'll fill you with holiday cheer. The $20 million in gifts are a special thank you to all of our FanDuel customers. So check your app for that holiday pick-me-up in just the right time for these holidays. And happy holidays from our FanDuel family to yours and that is a wrap week 15 is here team we've got you ready check out all the bets we talked about the vandal sportsbook app and good luck